Hi guys. It is actually a remarkably pleasant morning here in the collapse of global industrial civilization after the big <coughs> whirlwind of thread just about taking out bugs in a jar farm, but we seem to be drying out a little bit as we wait for Henri to come inflict its next punch up here. But it is now Friday, <clears throat> August 20th, 2021. Uh, just for those of you who care, this would have been my 38th wedding anniversary. Yes, if not for a ham sandwich. Anyway, that's another story for elsewhere in the Doomosphere. But since it is Friday over here at Collapse Chronicles, <clears throat> we're going to do what we do every Friday. And I know Sancho Panza is ready to put on his seatbelt. Because it is our weekly uh, <clears throat> roller coaster downhill ride uh, to the ecological meltdown roundup ramp where I simply check in with our friends at mongabay.com, Rhett Butler and the boys and girls at mongabay.com for their weekly laundry list of all the various ways this planet has been collapsing in the last seven days and will continue to collapse over the next seven days. <clears throat> And we're going to start out in Ecuador this week with this absolutely shocking news. <clears throat> Indigenous Amazonian communities bear the burden of Ecuador's balsa wood boom. Ecuador is the world's biggest exporter of balsa wood, most of it shipped to China. Yes, indigenous communities in Ecuador's Pastaza River Basin say balsa is being logged illegally in their territories. That the logging is damaging the ecological integrity of the region and hurting indigenous communities. The problem has now spread to neighboring Peru, where indigenous communities accuse Ecuadorian balsa loggers of felling commercially valuable trees and even kidnapping a child. There you go. Off to China with the Amazon rainforest. As long as we're, as long as China is in the Ecuador rainforest, they might as well be off the coast of Madagascar as China joins the foreign fleets quietly, quietly exploiting Madagascar's waters. For decades, fleets of industrial vessels from several nations have fished in Madagascar's waters. Now China has joined the fishing spree, sending at least 14 industrial longliner fishing vessels in the last several years. Hmm. What is this planet eating thing coming up the road? Good lord. Uh, clues from official documents indicate that Madagascar's government may have authorized these vessels to fish. Yes. Raising renewed concerns about the lack of transparency in Madagascar's offshore fishing sector. Do you think so? Uh, I was just, was it last Friday we were talking about salt marshes getting obliterated off the face of the planet? So this week, uh, Rhett's uh, YouTube video of the week. Manga Bay has its own excellent YouTube channel, so their video this week is uh, talking about the rush to protect the UK's salt marshes from sea level rise. Good luck on that. Okay, so uh, 
you know, all of the various ways that these planet eaters are uh, making life miserable for indigenous communities trying to defend their ancestral homelands. Well, usually they just put a bullet through their head or get them thrown into jail. But more and more what these planet eaters are doing are suing these uh, poverty-stricken indigenous communities to silence them. Here is just the latest example. Malaysian timber giant Samling Corporation takes conflict over logging activity to court. Plywood company Samsung Group has filed a $1.2 million defamation suit against an indigenous-led group in Sarawak, Borneo. Yes, the company says its business has been harmed by web posts in which advocacy group Save the Rivers alleges the company failed to properly secure free prior and, in, and conform sub consent of indigenous communities. Do you think so? Uh, anyway, guys, you, you know, the, the planet eaters are going to do everything they can to silence any opposition to uh, their activities. This whole word transparency, you're going to hear this word transparency more and more, which is how hard it is to figure out how much of the planet these planet eaters are eating. This is what this word transparency that makes your eyes roll back in your head when you hear this word. This is clear as pea soup. How about this one? Everything is traceable unless you don't want it to be. This is, uh, again, I, I love this. Ada Greenberry, the former Managing Director of Sustainability at Asia Pulp and Paper, quote, Consumers have the right to know where their products they buy come from and to trace them back to the source of the raw materials to ensure that they are not connected to anything dodgy, such as human rights violations and, of course, deforestation, Consequently, brands, retailers, and manufacturers have the responsibility to provide this traceability information to consumers. Yeah, right. There are, my guess, I mean, this is just a wild guess, uh, judging by, uh, as far as I can tell, right here with my friends in the Doomosphere, uh, I'm not mentioning any names. My guess is one one hundredth of one percent of consumers give a damn about where their products come from. They care about the price on the product. All of this traceability, transparency, all of this crap Nobody cares. There are a tiny few people. All this is is a way for for these planet eaters to uh, you know to toot their green washing horns about how transparent they are, and nobody cares. But anyway, hmm. I love uh, when they ask a question in a headline particularly when the answer remains to be seen. <clears throat> As populations grow, how will thirsty cities survive their drier future? Well, uh, I think Mad Max. Uh, if you want to answer the question, as populations grow, how will thirsty cities survive their drier future? Oh, I don't know. There's plenty of uh, movies out there like The Road and Mad Max and uh, anyway, 
Did you realize that the world's rapidly expanding cities are on a collision course with climate change, presenting unprecedented challenges to municipal and national governments as they work to continue providing their residents with access to safe and sufficient water. Yes, good luck on that. As I was saying yesterday, if there's any city looking for water, I have enough water here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. You can probably hear it in the background. I have enough water within 500 feet of me to water Los Angeles. All right, we now have wheat grass, wheat grass to save the planet. Uh, what is going on with medicinal plants in Indonesia? How about climate change is threatening to squeeze out Indonesia's medicinal plants? More than half of the medicinal plant species in Indonesia will not be able to grow in most of their current range by 2050 due to climate change, a new study says. There you go. Uh, okay, I, you know, I've mentioned this before, that this whole joke... And, and, and I lump uh, mining and deforestation together in this. This whole semantic difference between illegal and legal mining and deforestation. It was just recently that, who was it, Philip Fernside maybe had this uh, essay on uh, the, well, I don't know, I, I won't quote Philip on this. This is my essay that... The, the best way that uh, they're going to crack down on illegal deforestation and mining all over the planet, you know, by 2030 or whenever, is just to make all of the mining and deforestation legal. So as long as it's legal, it's no longer illegal. Here is the latest chapter in this. How about... An Ecuadorian town that survived illegal miners now faces a legal miner. The town of La Merced in Ecuador gained notoriety when it was invaded by illegal miners in 2017 for almost two years. <clears throat> the area was plagued by violence, prostitution, and drug addiction. Authorities have evicted those miners, but now the land may become home to legal mining operations, which many residents emphatically oppose. Yes, more than 300 people have spent over a month blocking the path of the machinery, trucks, and employees of the Han Rhein Ecuadorian Exploration and Mining Company. Yes. The, uh, I guess these planet eaters warn that confrontations will arise and has called on local, regional, and national authorities to take immediate action, you know, against the people protesting. So, uh, you know, these legal miners are uh, every bit as much of a threat as the illegal miners. Okay, what is going on with wildlife trafficking in Latin America and probably everywhere else on the planet? Weak controls fuel surge in wildlife trafficking by air across Latin America. A new report gives an unprecedented look into wildlife trafficking um, by commercial aviation, identifying Mexico, Brazil, and Colombia 
<clears throat> as the top sources of the illegal trade uh, between 2010 and 2020, 65 different species from the region were confiscated at airports. Um, live specimens were mostly stashed in carry-on bags. Uh, and it doesn't say right here, but you can bet where the vast majority of these trafficked species are headed, and that would be China. Okay. Wow. Speaking of China, hmm, you will not believe this. Cambodian design. Cambodian Dam, a disaster for local communities, human rights group says, not to mention the non-human rights groups. Rights activists allege that a Chinese-financed hydroelectric project in northeastern Cambodia has been a human rights disaster after it displaced nearly 5,000 indigenous and ethnic minority people. Yes. Um, advocacy group Human Rights Watch says communities were largely coerced into accepting an inadequate compensation. Do you think so? The hydroelectric scheme being financed by China also had wide-ranging environmental impacts affecting fishery yields across the wider Mekong Basin and flooding vast amounts of forest. The report highlights the humanitarian and environmental shortcomings of China's Belt and Road Initiative which is advancing many, read thousands upon thousands of similar projects across Africa and Asia. And don't forget Latin America. I have said before, uh, whoever it was that I was interviewing, I've interviewed so many people claiming correctly that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is the number one single biggest threat to life on planet Earth as of right now and probably for at least the next 10 years. The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is a bigger threat to life on planet Earth than climate change. They ought to make the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative the 10th planetary boundary. Anyway, I understand that if you breathe the words Chinese Belt and Road Initiative to a room full of normies, you will clear the room. If you want to clear a room of normies, Say the words, Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, maybe the word transparency, but if you want to get a room full of normies babbling on incoherently, say the words sustainability and watch the clueless morons jump to attention. Anyway, here is another term that will clear a room of normies trawling bycatch. Yes, trawling bycatch increases the risk of marine life extinction in Brazil and everywhere else. Up to 50 kilos, that's what, about 110 pounds of fish caught in Brazil are thrown away for every kilo that arrives on land. Yes, more than 400,000 tons of marine life were discarded, meaning thrown away between 2000 and 2018 in just four states. Uh, less than 
of the almost 26,000 fishing boats registered by the Brazilian government, not even counting the illegal ones, are even monitored by satellites. Uh, at the global level, 19 countries, regions, and territories have prohibited trawling in their waters. Yeah, right. Okay, what is going on with wildfires in the Amazon rainforest? Uh, we're going to zero in on Brazil's Acre state. A bad fire year predicted in Brazil's Acre state. What is to be done? As of August 15th, 29 major fires have been set, have been set this year in the southwestern Brazilian state of Acre, burning more than 1,000 hectares or 2,500 acres compared to just one major fire reported by the same date last year, which burned just 50 acres. So, 50 acres last year, 2,500 acres this year being torched in one Brazilian state. Uh, a recent study found that unprecedented levels of fires burned in standing rainforest uh, in 2019, which was neither a drought nor an El Nino year, meaning the risk of forest fires is rising even when rainfall is normal. Yes, this adds to mounting evidence that the discourse and policies of President Jair Bozonero's administration have relaxed regulations and emboldened land grabbers and those who set illegal fires. Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, here was the second part of that story on trawling off the coast of Brazil. I don't know why they didn't put the two stories together. Brazil, a wreck on trawling control. Uh, the lack of control amplifies the impacts of trawling a technique that uses fine mesh nets to scrape the seabed, sweeping up everything in their path. Species of low commercial value are thrown back into the ocean, almost always dead. The sardine catch in Brazil has already fallen from 80,000 tons to about 15,000 tons and stocks of mullet and other species are also shrinking. Uh, commercial species that could disappear from the map uh, have jumped from 17 to 64 species, an increase of 376 percent. What are you growling about? Is it a bear or what? Is it a bear? Or is it a trawler? Is it a fracker? You know, that now that Andrew Cuomo is out of office, this could be a fracker coming up the road to offer me millions of dollars to frack bugs in a jar farm. But we have Sancho Panza protecting bugs in a jar farm from the frackers that are mounting at the uh, state line 10 miles from here at the Pennsylvania state line now that Andrew Cuomo is gone. Anyway, back to uh, Manga Bay. <clears throat> Here's the latest uh, update on that uh, cargo ship burning and sinking in Sri Lanka. Uh, 
consumers are concerned that pollutants from a cargo ship that caught fire and sank in May could end up in the fish they eat. And the government has not given any reassurances. Yes, experts say there are reasons to be concerned. Yep, but note that Sri Lankans are already eating seafood that is contaminated with heavy metals and microplastics. Yes, with or without a cargo ship sinking. All right, we were talking about salt marshes. Now, let's look at the salt flats. I didn't even realize salt flats. I thought, you know, like a salt flat. Uh, that would be like one of the places that is, even I would say is okay for the planet eaters. But, but I, even the salt flats. Indigenous communities, environmental activists, and a mining company, yes, have agreed on a set of measures to try to save the Salado de Punta Negra salt flat in northern Chile. Uh, oh, I see. Uh, communities say the extraction of groundwater by the giant copper mine has drained the lake and caused irreparable environmental harm. Uh, and there you go. So they were draining a lake. All right. Well, let's go over to the Philippines where we find scientists and communities battling against a Philippine land reclamation project. Yes, a land reclamation project in the central Philippines spanning 430 acres faces strong opposition from various organizations. The $456 million Smart City, Smart City Project, uh, yes. While the project promises economic benefits, critics say these will be negated by its environmental impacts, which include covering 85% of the smart city's coastline and burying, burying four marine protected areas under the smart city's uh, fill, I guess. Uh, yes, sounds like a smart city to me. You will not believe this, and we're going to go over out to the middle of Papua New Guinea. Uh, you know, one of the most remote uh, outposts remaining gardens of Eden on the planet, which, of course, uh, Papua New Guinea uh, is, is an absolute battleground and feeding frenzy by the planet eaters. So you will, you will be shocked. By, by this report from New Guinea, plantations, meaning oil palm and probably rubber plantations and roads are stripping away the Pua's forest and they are just getting started. Indonesia's Papua region comprising the western half of the island of New Guinea lost an area has lost an area of rainforest five times the size of London in the past 20 years. Deforestation there has ramped up in the past two decades as companies clear rainforest to make way for large scale plantations and the government embarks on a massive push for infrastructure development, can you say the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. More forests are set to disappear in the future as the government has allocated millions of acres of land to be developed into industrial plantation and the development of new roads exacerbating 
the risk of deforestation. Mm, do you think so? Uh, Uh, what's going on with farmers in Indonesia's South Sulawesi have rejected government offers to buy their land for a railway project, saying they depend on the land for their livelihood. Yes. <clears throat> the residents say protecting their lands and farms will be more beneficial in selling them for the railway line, which the government is touting as a boost for the economy. Yes. Uh, the land conflict in the village is one of hundreds of similar conflicts that have popped up across Sulawese as the government splurges on new infrastructure projects. Okay, uh, are we heading into a new El Nino? I can't ever keep track. So here's some new reports on the last El Nino. The 2015 to 2016 El Nino caused two and a half billion trees to die in just one percent of the Amazon rainforest. <clears throat> New research shows how a combination of high temperatures, intense drought, and human-caused fires resulted in dramatic forest loss in the lower Tapajos River Basin in the Brazilian Amazon. Um, According to the authors, forest reduction meant that one of the world's largest carbon sinks generated, generated almost 500 million tons of CO2 emissions, an amount higher than the annual emissions of developed countries such as the UK and Australia. Due to climate change, more extreme droughts are predicted to affect most of the Amazon basin in this century. Yes, the 2015 El Nino could be seen as a window into the future. Yes. Here is drawing dots between mangrove uh, desecration and firefight populations. Firefire populations along the banks of the Rimbao River in Malaysia have declined drastically in the past decade due to habitat loss from mangrove destruction. Uh, Alright, how about Armies, you know, these, have you heard of these swarm drones? These uh, little bitty drones, uh, swarms of these little drones uh, saving the planet. Um, anyway, guys, uh, Good Lord, uh, I'm, uh, okay, I'm going to do uh, three more. I could go on with this. So what is the statistics so far? And for the record, guys, I believe this about as much as I believe Sancho Panza is a pit bull. Okay, I am hitting the you know what button on this one but anyway this is what Rhett Butler has to say Amazon forest loss hits second highest level since 2008 this year deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon has declined slightly over the past 12 months 
but still reach the second highest level according to data from Brazil's own research. Yes. Uh, so officially, this is according to Brazil uh, registered deforestation registered 1,498 square kilometers, otherwise known as 578 square miles in July, um, bringing the 12-month total to 8,591 square kilometers, which is 6.8% below the total this time last year when the deforestation reached the highest level since 2008. Uh, but, okay, that's the 12 month, okay, but deforestation since January 1st and today is up 3.4% over last year. Um, you know, how they confuse us till they die. The important thing is since January 1st, deforestation is up 3.4%. Okay. Uh, let's head over to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Advocates raise alarm over proposal to reopen DRC forest to loggers. In 2002, the DRC imposed a moratorium on new logging concessions under pressure from environmental campaigners about deforestation and corruption. But now the DRC government has submitted a plan in July that would end the logging moratorium. Advocates say a round of new logging concessions could lead to, a, to massive carbon emissions and the violation of community land rights. And of course, guys, uh, this is just the latest chapter. You know, Manga Bay has been predicting for years that there will be no rainforest in sub-Saharan Africa by 2050. But we are going to end with some hopium knee slapper. I, you know, I, I, uh, I, I'm just going to save the hopium till the end because I realize I'm talking to myself. So what is the hope, the apocalyptic hopium knee slapper of the day to end this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant? How about shared earth conservation promises to prioritize nature and people? Yes. A new article in Science calls for conservation in Africa, you know, like reopening logging in the, the uh, DCR, you know, that kind of that kind of conservation in Africa to take a quote shared earth <coughs> a shared earth approach that prioritizes both nature and people. According to the authors, <coughs> this approach <coughs> would empower <coughs> local communities, indigenous people, and governments to make decisions that would meet both equity and biodiversity goals. The author suggests that retaining or restoring 20%, 20% of living and working areas to help address global conservation targets, while at the same time giving local people the benefits of nature and building resilience against climate change. Yes. Conservation in Africa. There you go. 
But anyway, uh, I've got to wrap up this week's ecological meltdown roundup rant because I have more Airbnbers checking into the tiny house in a couple of hours, and uh, I need to change the sheets in the tiny house and then go check to see if it's time to start harvesting my 2,000 years of silver queen corn which narrowly escaped being destroyed in a flood two days ago so I better get out there and harvest this corn before the next flood which might be here on Monday anyway get out there and enjoy your organic corn while you still can bye guys